Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at adding a photo capture element to the audio guestbook. In the previous tutorial, we added video capture, and in the first one, we just created a simple audio guestbook. So what we're doing here is sort of building um, each event up a little bit more um, to, until we get to a point where we've got something quite customized to uh, what you're wanting to uh, achieve. So let's jump in and have a look at how we do this. So we'll go across to Windows. Now, if we have the event editor here, uh, we need to import the uh, templated event or the sample event that I created for this tutorial. And you can download that from assets.breezesoftware.com forward slash agb dash template dash video dash photo dot zip. And I will put the link to that in the description below. So once you've downloaded that, you can import that event uh, into the event editor. And you can rename it. So we'll call it Steve's video photo AGB party. We can copy and paste that and just give the folder name, same name. Okay, so once that's created, we just need to make sure that has synced up to Dropbox. All right, then we can come across to the iPad and uh, hop out of the event we're in, come into our events list, refresh, Okay, find the uh, new event and update it. That'll bring in all the files and assets that we need. So I'll just give that a moment to download. Okay, so that's done. So let's go ahead and run this one so we can see uh, what it looks like. So it looks a lot like the video audio guestbook setup where we have live view on the start screen uh, with a text, uh, with an image overlay with some instructions. But now we have this um, down the bottom here, a take photo button that we can use as well. So first of all, let's just pick the phone up to see how that works. So yeah, it's just our normal video audio guestbook. So that's great. We covered all that off in the last tutorial. So let's have a look more specifically at the photo side of things. So if we go ahead and press take photo, it's going to start the countdown, take a single picture and apply an overlay to it. So that's pretty simple. Um, so guests can now either pick the phone up uh, and leave a video message or they can uh, press the take photo button. And if I jump up here to our hidden gallery, we can see to some of my past uh, tests here, we have a single image um, and some multi-photo layouts that we're going to look at in just a moment, uh, as well as the videos that we had captured as well. All right, so let's have a bit of a look uh, in the event editor at what's going on here. Now, because we covered off the video side of things in the last tutorial, I'm not going to dive into that, um, but nothing's really changed there at all. In the video settings, it's all the same as it was in the last tutorial. What we have done now, if we come to general and touch screen actions and select our video ready overlay screen, which is the starting screen for the event, uh, we can see that we have a button down the bottom and a touch screen action on top of it. If we click on that, you'll see that the touch screen action is separate to the button itself. And that's because in Breeze, you always design your screens as a whole, and then you bring them into the touch screen editor, and then you drag on your touch screen actions as required. And this means that you can have hidden buttons. So for example, if you wanted the ability to take a photo, but you didn't want everyone to know about it, you could remove the graphical element from it, but still have this button down, this touchscreen action here that only you or your staff know about to trigger a, a hidden photo, for example. It also means that you can make it larger or smaller. So if you need to cater for guests that are a bit clumsy or drunken and they can never hit that button right, you can make the touch area around it much bigger. If we come into the photos tab, we can see that we have this uh, number of photos set to one, which means we're taking one photo and the photo preview time is set to zero, which means that when we take that photo, it's not showing us a preview of it. Rather, it's going straight to the finished photo layout. So if we jump into edit print layout and you can use the print layout as a way to make the digital, digital output um, or if you are printing. So in this case, we're doing it just as a digital. So our size is 1080 by 1350 but you can change that to a more uh, printer friendly, for example, 8, uh, 1240 by 1844, and that will change the page layout um, uh, to something more suitable for a six by four. But in this example, we'll just keep it as 1080 by 1350, and we'll cover off printing in another video. So if we want to take more than one photo, what we would do is come back into the photos tab, and let's just change that to three, for example. 
And then now if we come into the edit print layout and we select the number one, which represents the first photo, we can scale that down by dragging in the corners. Uh, we can rotate it if we want and we can position it anywhere we want. So maybe what we do is something like, like this, and then we can right click, say add photo two, and we can put that one up here. Maybe we'll rotate that just a little bit like that. And that's sitting on that one. And then we can say add photo three, rotate that one, scale it down, and we can do something. Oh, we go up, scale it up just a little bit. So we go something like that. So we've got our three photos laid out with the logo um, down the bottom. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. Okay it. And as always, uh, we just right click and say regen regenerate manifest just to be safe. And then we come back to the iPad and we'll refresh that to see what that looks like. If we hit run, we can take our photo. All right, so we've got our three photos, and now we've got our new uh, layout here as well. So let's jump into Canva and have a look at how we can change the graphic elements that go around that as well. Okay, so we've got a template that we've created uh, that corresponds with the overlay in the uh, demo event. So I'll put a link to this Canva template uh, below so you can uh, access this one as well. So let's just go ahead and make a few uh, changes. Uh, we'll shrink the logo down a little bit, just pop it down the corner and move that and let's just add uh i found this telephone sort of uh uh illustration i thought was yeah sort of appropriate so we'll scale that up um maybe get that going something like that uh we could change some colors here add some of that pink into it but white yeah i think that looks okay just for this example well maybe we'll change so We'll go back then. So we'll keep that. So we've just made a bit of a change to the overlay file here, just so we can see how this works. So we'll go ahead and download that uh, transparent background. And the size is the same as what we've set in the event editor, 1080 by 1350. All right, so we'll come to our download folder. We can see the file here called uh, demo overlay. We'll copy that and then come to our events folder uh, where we have the video and photo event. And we'll paste that in here. Okay, and since this is replacing the overlay file, um, we will delete that one. And we just need to rename this one to just overlay. And then we can come into the event editor Let's just cancel out of that what we were working on. And so now it's updated our uh, layout here with this new overlay image. Uh, it's got the graphic on it. Uh, and then we can, of course, adjust these a little bit further uh, if we want. But something like that might work. Bit of a cheesy layout for an audio guestbook company. So we'll save that. OK it. Right click to regenerate, regenerate the manifests. Uh, make sure that's all synced in Dropbox so it's up to date. Then we can come across to the iPad, exit that event, update it. Now let's take our pictures. Okay, so now we've got our new layouts, got the three pictures that we put there, uh, and we also have the new overlay applied as well. Lastly, let's have a look at how we tweak that start screen uh, and maybe move that button down the bottom into a different position or resize it and adjust the touch screen action accordingly. So we'll jump back into uh, Canva. 
Now, I've also got a template for this, and we'll put the link for the template uh, for the start screen in the comments uh, description below. So we've got our uh, screen here. I won't bother changing all this text. We did that in the last tutorial, but let's uh, have a look at this button down the bottom. So let's say we want to just make it a little bit smaller and less obvious. Maybe we want to uh, encourage people to take more, uh, leave more video messages and take photos. So we don't want it quite so, um, um, so obvious. So we're going to push it down to the bottom right hand corner there. Let's fix that text up a bit. And while we're here, we might just change, change the color. Uh, I'll make it, make it yellow, yellow text. Um, that way it's sort of there. Maybe not so obvious. Let's we'll put it up a little bit. So once we've done that, we can export that file. Uh, it's going to be a PNG uh, transparent, and we just want to download the um, first page. And we'll download that one. Okay, so let's have a look at our download folder. So we've got a file here called video underscore ready underscore overlay. So we'll copy that one. And we need to paste that into our folder of assets. Uh, we'll paste, and since the file name is correct, we will just go straight over the top of the old or the original version. So once that's done, we just need to come back into the event editor, uh, advanced settings, touchscreen actions. So now we'll see we've got our new touchscreen button down the bottom, but the actual touch action uh, is not fully covering it. So if we just updated the event right now, if someone came along and just tapped on the right hand side of that button, it wouldn't do anything because it's just a graphic. It won't do anything until we move the touch screen action over it. So let's go ahead and scale that up a bit. So we just want to make a nice big touch area. So if they touch anywhere down there, it will work. And we'll save that and OK it. As we've added a new graphic, we'll just regenerate those manifests as well and check Dropbox to make sure that's synced. Uh, then we can come back across to the iPad. Let's update that one. All right, and we'll run it. And so now we've got our new touch screen button down the bottom, um, and we can tap on that to take our photos. So there you go. So we have now got a photo element on our audio guest book. Uh, we can uh, leave a video message, and we know how to apply the art overlay artwork to the photo and even tweak uh, placement of buttons on the screen as well. So in future videos, we're going to dive into more um, more little intricacies on using the touch screen editor and designing really customized user interfaces. Um, and then we're also going to be looking at how we add sharing to the experience as well. So when people leave a message or take a photo, they can send that um, off to um, themselves or a friend um, via email or SMS. Any questions, just jump into the comments and let me know. I'm always happy to help.